All right, there's my damn phone charger guy thing. All right, boom. All right, more better. Y'all see? Computer's over here. All right, so. Find my face. Woo! All right. Let's see if I can find us on the computers. Uh, home videos. Go to videos. Live. Kill the volume. All righty. Big fat. Okay. So, chat chat. What's up, Poison? Okay. What's up, Brother Vic? Okay, can you guys see that shit? So I did go ahead and decided to start on clay face. I couldn't find my damn clay. I had, I don't know, 20, 30 pounds of uh, brown clay. I don't know what the hell I did with it. Couldn't freaking tell you. Let me see. So I've been kind of... Getting clay and then throwing it on the board. And I found this little uh, cutter at the dollar store for like chopping onions or some shit. I don't know really what the hell it is. It's actually pretty damn cool, man. It works great for cutting clay. So I've been using that and just taking a five, four or five pounds at a time and then throwing it on the old fat head here. And I got a couple of little like uh, action figures, my boy's action figure from way back when. So I'm kind of got to use him as a reference. And then I got my big one you guys saw I post on cobwebs and candlesticks. So I got a couple of clay faces here to look at, plus just what's in my head from the uh, comic books and stuff. So Yeah, I got a couple of references. Good enough for me. I want to make me a big ass clay face trophy head. I'll do it out of rigid foam. His teeth I'll make later. I'll do the teeth and resin and I'll pour and I'll mold those. Um, just so I can poke them in later because this will have to be a silicone mold to do... Um, uh, rigid foam uh, bust. So, I'm just kind of throwing some clay on Fathead here. Make his big blubbery lips. He's got some cool lips. Like, I keep in mind my undercuts and stuff. I'll probably just sculpt off the chair. I'll just stand. Let's see. What's up, Jamie Riska? Hello, Scotland. What's up, Jordan? What's up, Darkback? Yeah, I figured I'd jump on for a little bit, show you guys some of the new stuff I'm working on. I haven't been doing uh, a lot of painting at work lately, man. I've been freaking busy, so it's like not a whole time, a lot of time for live streaming and stuff like that. So I figured, hey, I'll jump on, show you guys what I'm doing on Clayface tonight. I'm just kind of roughing this guy in. I got some uh, resin eyes. I made these. These are glow in the dark, uh, just like half domes, and I just popped them in for eyeballs for them. So am I going to be in the way? I think I'm probably going to be in the damn way. Is that better? Something like that? Okay. Yeah, if I just wanted to kind of rough them in. Put these over here. Have a little clay face in the corner. He's got a little mean mug in him. I love his green eye or his yellow eyes, man. Uh, I think when I get these things molded, I'm probably going to go ahead and give him resin eyes. I'll just pour the resin eyes into the mold first, and then I'll backfill it with rigid foam. Um, just so he can have nice, glossy, rigid eyes. I think that would be cool. Let's see. Yeah, this little clay cutter, man, works great. You just slab off a, cut off a slab of clay, and you're good to go, man. Works great. So I'm just still kind of bulking him out. He's got roughly an egg shape, but, uh, I don't know. I, I, I kind of like it. I want it uneven and unsymmetrical because he is clay. He's just a big, fat, drippy, muddy guy, so... Mm. Is that better? Okay. I don't want them completely even. Yeah, I just, huge Batman fan, long time Batman fan, so I figured, you know, man, I saw this figure, this new guy come out, and he's on Amazon right now, he's like, I think 37, 38 bucks. He's just freaking massive, and in the comic book, man, he could literally swallow Batman's head. So I wanted to make this guy freaking huge, so he literally looks like he could fit a whole human head in his mouth. Um... And again, I'm just long time. Batman has the best rogues gallery of all time. Uh, him and Spider-Man. So I figure, you know what, man? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick me out of a freaking big clay face. I love clay face. So I 
think I'm going to try and do a bat character next. So I bought the big man bat that was like this guy off of uh, Amazon. So maybe I'll stick him here. I've got like an extra 40 pounds of clay. You guys see him there? There he is. I probably should ditch this wrapper. Alright. Yeah, I want them to work on his lower lip. I want them uh, kind of blubbery lips. I can always run a torch on them later and smooth all this stuff out. And I want kind of an undercut on his chin. So I'm going to have to just lay this back. Most I'm just trying to dial in his shape, rough him in, put some more clay in his roof of his mouth. Ugh. But the other day when I started this guy, I put him on the driveway, my clay, that stuff was like soft in like five minutes, man. It was amazing. So ahead and just fill in his mouth. So far, no tools, man. Just all finger work. I figure, man, it's kind of a crappy Sunday. It looks like it's getting ready to, or Saturday. It looks like it's getting ready to rain. It's like, oh, I think I'll jump on for a bit, man. See what everybody's up to. BS for a little bit. Okay. All righty. See, Poison says, generally used a bread cookie dough. I wish, man. Jimmy Riska, Keith, you gonna make a brother for a little man? I don't know. I think so. Vic gave me a uh, a little devil costume or a little devil head. He's like a little. Um, he's about to size a little man. It's an old. It's like a one piece shoulders and head mask. So I might make him a brother this year. It depends. I'm so freaking busy at work. I don't know how much time I'm gonna have to work on little man. But little man is most definitely gonna be a Ghostbuster this year. Uh, last year I found the costume uh, on clearance at uh, Spirit Halloween. So Little Man's going to be a Ghostbuster this year. So I kind of want to do that video where I dress him and I want to slime his costume, make him a pair of goggles like uh, like Ray wears. All right, get in there. All right, let's see. What else could he use it? I want them chubby-ass cheeks on him. I want some kind of jowls too, man. Looks like his clay is sagging and kind of running down. I loved in the uh, cartoon... When they always had him like, uh, he was always like dripping and constantly like running and everything he touched was like slimy and nasty and there was shit all over the place. Um, such a great cartoon, man, back in like the early 90s. I love that stuff. So, man, how can you screw up a clay, man? He's just a freaking pile of clay, basically. So, yeah, I'm going to put some nice detail in him and make him where I can mold him. Give him a little bit more of a lower chin. I like that big... Got kind of an oblong chin, so he's heavier on one side, so that's cool. And he's kind of like a great sculpt to start with, man, because he's just a blob of clay. Like, how can you fuck it up? You can't. Let's see. Oh, whiskey's coming, Ezekiel. I gotta try it yet. It's pretty freaking cool. I had no idea that the, that the booze came out of the little gargoyle's mouth. That's freaking awesome, man. Buy your daughter the kitty pillow. She's got so many pillows in her room, Shay. It's disgusting. I can't even have any more pillows. And I really like the one that was on... Uh, at, not at home, Home Goods. They had a, uh, well, like, it was a blue pillow, a little trick or treaters going across the bottom. And I thought, man, I could have changed out my chair pillow and put that one in here. So I don't know. If I see it again, I might snatch it. But man, I gotta just, there's too many damn good pillows on the freaking market, man. It sucks. All right, Clay, man. Beef up your cheek a little bit. Yeah, I'm using, uh, uh, oil clay for this guy, so if I don't get it all done in you know a couple of days, I'm not I'm not playing the game where it cracks and you gotta come back and fix it all. I'm not not a fan of that shit. So plus I don't have any wet clay. I got some projects I'm gonna need some for pretty soon though, so eventually I'm gonna have to give and break down and get some. But I don't think I ever want to make masks with them. I just don't have time to sculpt all day. I'm just not that fast yet. Thank you, Gene! And you got one day off this week? Damn, Gene. Jordan says, I went to my Lowe's and my wife filled the bed of my truck with Halloween goodies. You know, my Lowe's, man, they just will not put out the freaking display. I wanted to see the um, 
12 foot mummy and get some tape of that for everybody. But uh, they put all the slashes up on a high shelf because people around my neighborhood will grab them and break their hands off and poke their freaking eyes in and just act like goddamn savages. So I think that's why my uh, Lowe's hasn't put the stuff on the floor yet. I'm going to try and check back in and do maybe one more video there. But I'd really like to get some footage of the uh, 12 foot mummy for everybody. So I've got a... I think I got a Menards update video ready to go, and I got a Joann's ready to go, too. Alright, let's bulk out the back of this head. I want it to be kind of uneven, but I want a thick surface back there. I don't want it too thin, so it looks like he's busting out of a wall. Like a good, I want a good meaty section over here. I don't want it really weak and sunken in. I want him to look like he's coming almost through the wall like the Kool-Aid man, busting through the wall. Move him out. I'm gonna bring his bottom lip out a little bit. Like I said, I'll do his uh, teeth and resin. I'll mold them, pour them, put them in later. I want to give him that big, fat, juicy, blubbery lip. All right. I wonder if I can get away with the. Uh, Rolling some of these guys. Where's my Quinn tools? Quinn tools! Quinn tools! Where the freaking hell did you go? Little stampers. God damn it, I know I had them things out here. Right here. Okay. Alright. So Quinn's got these cool little roller tools. And when you got all kinds of lumpy clay like this, man, I like to just go ahead and bust them in and roll them out, and it helps kind of level out your little uh, holes and pushes clay over your little open spots. Works freaking great, man. So I like to get stuff roughed in, and for him, he's just a, a freaking blob. Like, how can I screw up, really? So I'll just go over and roll them. I need to make my own tools, too. With some deep, big old monster eyebrows on this guy. Some big, uh, what do you call it? Like some, uh, oh, shit. I can't think of the name. Like caveman eyebrows on him. Neanderthal, that's what I want, that's what I'm looking for. You can actually roll in the little body lines and the little little furrows in his brow. And just to kind of rough him in and smooth him out a little bit. If I don't like where it's going, I just rub the clay over by hand and then close it up. You guys carefully can't see on this side. And I know where I can add clay, bulk it out. Definitely going to do lower brows on him. And I thought about it even maybe later on. I may just sculpt like a part of a batarang or something like that and stick it in his head. as maybe like an option or something for down the road if I get this uh, all done and molded, hopefully for next MHC. But any progress I make, I'll show you guys on Cobwebs and Candlesticks on the, the Facebook group and show you guys what I've been up to on them. Yeah, I want the big crow magnet ass eye, eye, uh, eyebrows. Smooth all this guy out. And I can start adding. Yeah, these little roller tools, you ain't got to push hard. I mean, this clay is pretty soft. It's easy to work with by hand, which helps me because my hands got arthritis in from all the years working on cars. But, uh, man, I just love these little texture tools from David Quinn. Brother Quinn just killed these, man. And he's got three different kinds. This guy is the little happy face. So I'm just using it doesn't matter for me for texture right now. I'm just trying to see what my little uh, lines look like on this guy. I'm gonna give him kind of a little, uh, little hat, like a little, uh, little pointy head, almost like this clay face. All right, take that out of his head. And right now, uh, Hobby Lobby has clay on sale for forty percent off. So if you guys are thinking about grabbing some clay and sculpting, start with some oil-based clay because you don't have to babysit it like if it were um, uh, water-based. You can start with oil. I can leave this for a month and a half, come back. It'll be the same. Nothing will crack, nothing will dry out. So uh, I always, you know, if you guys gonna start sculpting, wanna play around, man, grab some oil-based clay, use oil-based clay. Oh, uh, Jordan bought, what's up, Brother Dave? Jordan bought the Freddy today. I think the Freddy, out of all the three slashers at Lowe's, looks the best. Uh, he's got the, the decent uh, 
decent voice, vocabulary, whatever, his lines and stuff like that. Out of all three, I thought Freddie was the best. Jamie Risk says, you can't wait to upload Menards the second trip. It's I think I've got it. It's it's in there, uh, Jamie. Probably Tuesday, Wednesday, I bet. Yeah, the one from Lowe's. I mean, they had all three slashers, which is a first. I don't know what the hell they were doing with that damn makeup, man. Or the, the music in the... Uh, the Jason and the Michael Myers music. I don't know what that little gong show stuff is they're playing. Like xylophone music or something. Jordan says, my wife wanted Jason too, but they were out. Mine had all three of them in stock. So that was pretty cool. No, it goes Jordan. Holding the spray pan in your hand. Them goddamn spray guns are heavy. My girl got the Chucky that talks and stabs. I didn't know that the Chucky moved. He kind of wanders around his little box. Um, that shocked me. Savage started playing with it. I'm like, oh man, Chucky moves? Like, I didn't know that. I thought he was just a little static doll. So I think he's, was he like, is he 69 bucks, 70 bucks, something like that? I had no clue that Chucky roamed around his little, uh, the little box they had him in. He had a little base, or maybe he goes so far, or whatever, you know? Get in there. Roll them blubber lips. Inside of his mouth is going to be a pain in your ass to do. I got to do a whole lower, lower jaw with jagged teeth sticking out. So, make some holes for his teeth. And like I said, the teeth, I'm going to do the teeth on Sculpey, man. I'm not even going to play around with trying to do them in uh, clay. And then when I mold this thing, bend them up, get them out of whack. So, I like doing the individual teeth. I'll, I'll mold his teeth and I'll make them in super sculpty, bake them, and then I'll mold them so I can pour them in resin. So when he's done and he's poured up, he'll be all rigid foam with resin eyes and resin teeth. So he should last look cool on people's walls for like a game room or whatever, or Batman fans. And he'll be nice and life size. So I think in the comic book he's like eight feet tall, if I remember right. Basil Carlo. He was a horror actor in the Batman universe, doing horror movies and stuff like that. Horror movies, not horror movies. All right, you lumpy bastard. Yeah, get in that little eye right there, right there. Yeah, I'm a huge Batman fan. Read them since I was a kid. I figure, well, seeing Brother Vic's been on, he's molding that big ass skeleton, which is going to be freaking awesome. I can already think of 10 different ways to paint that thing. Uh, bigger and better projects for us, man. Trio, we're always trying to move forward and do bigger stuff, cooler stuff, stuff that we don't see, or we don't want to do 27 videos on one damn thing. So we're always working and grinding on it, guys. Come on, blubber lips. There we go. Fill that in. Bring the little pouty lips out. There we go. I'm going to have to fill in that undercut back here, I bet. All right. Let me get his outside closer. A little cheekbone. Yeah, I'm looking, not, not really looking to do an exact copy of either one of these guys, but just something similar with the same features, though. I think if I can make a cool battering stick out of his head, it would totally sell this thing. I may even do a hand. I was talking to my buddy earlier. And maybe I'll do a hand, like coming out of the wall or something like that. So if you hang him on the wall, maybe we can have one of his hands go into the wall. Maybe a couple of fingers on the other hand. They should throw in a ghost face, too. I'm surprised they didn't make a ghost face. That's like one of the big other slashers that came out in, like, what? When did Scream come out? 91? He's like one of the next big slashers next to uh, the original, the old school uh, uh, original ones. 
Yeah, that music was lame as hell, man. Jordan says, yes, sir, I'm about to be 32, and I feel it in those settling and sanding cars and holding those heavy guns. Hell yeah, man. I mean, hell, a full-on primer cup, if you're going over a hood or a roof or something like that, and you're holding that goddamn gun out in front of you for, like, you know, five, six passes, man, that shit sucks, man. Oh, the conjoined skeletons, that's one of my little, that's my MHC purpose from uh, Milwaukee a couple years ago. I want to rebuild them, Norm, make them look like old, like for a cabinet of curiosities. So, I've been meaning to do a video on that, but I haven't really shot anything. Oh, man, the Jeepers Creepers. I love the Creeper, man. When uh, Jeepers Creepers, when that came out and I saw that, I, you know, I love that movie because it had me guessing the whole time, like, what the hell is this guy? Is he undead? Is he, you know, is he a gargoyle? Uh, that was such a cool movie. The bad thing is it turns out the guy's a fucking uh, pedophile, so uh, they're going to be rebooting it or something like that. Um, I don't know how. I think there's there's two movies or are there three movies? Um but they're going to reboot it, and I'm kind of looking forward to see what they do. I think there's three movies, I think. Um, but I, the first one I loved, man, when they came across him, and they were in that, I think it was like a 59 Chevy, and they came across him like in, in that thing, just throwing bodies down that freaking hole. It's like, holy shit, that's freaking awesome, man. Like, what is this guy doing, man? So, oh, shit. I thought that was cool. I thought it was a really great movie. I thought it was a unique take on a different guy that kind of kept you... Guessing to the end, and then boom, he's in the middle of the street, and his wings pop out like, oh, man, that's freaking awesome, man. I hear you, Jordan. Uh, for a body man, it's usually lower back, knees, ankle, stuff like that from working on concrete. My knees feel great. My lower back sucks. It's basically blown out, man. So uh, it's most definitely a hard job from being up and down on, you know, frame racks or on concrete all day. It sucks. It is not easy on our bodies. So for most of the guys I know, it's their knees. For me, I'm lucky. My knees feel great. Uh, my lower back, not so good. All right. Move some of this to the back. All right, Basil, not too bad so far. I gotta bring these lids down lower on his eyes. There we go. Boom, there we go. Come around here. Fill in some of these little rivulets. little valley in his eyeball. Yes, I mean, these tools, totally ingenious. There's so much you can do with them. You don't really have to wait till the end before you start putting your little texture on. You can use them during the whole sculpting process. They work. Definitely want to give him some big, heavy bags under his eyes. And I do have some foil buried back here and some foil in his lower jaw so he's not all uh he's not all clay but there's right now there's probably 22 pounds of clay on this guy right now on this board am i blocking you guys Oh, yeah, the concrete's on the feet and ankles, man. Norm says, I hit 60 and I'm falling apart. I feel you, Norm. I'm right there, man. It's like every day I feel like I'm ready to fall, come home and fall in half, crack in half. You went to high school with the kid that was in the original one? Damn, really? Yeah, I don't know how they got the, um... How they got the license to do Michael Myers and Freddy, or Michael Myers and Jason, and not use the damn theme music. Like, how do you license a character... 
but you don't get his theme music. So that was kind of odd to me. I was not expecting that weird xylophone music that came out of that stuff, man. I was like, what the hell is this supposed to be, man? Like, I don't know. Hopefully they fix that shit, because like, who the hell wants a six-foot Michael Myers that doesn't go... <laughs> Nobody wants a Michael Myers to play xylophone music. That's dumb as shit. Dome top head. Let's see this little guy. Yeah, he's got a big old, looks like a loaf of bread sticking off the corner of his eye. Definitely one of his eyes in shadows. So when he's in a dark room, after somebody comes in and turns the light on, his eyes will glow. I definitely want to beep up his, his uh, eye sockets and stuff. That's not too good. You get a ball up to my balls. Open to my balls, son. Okay. Some heavy ass overhangs. Like I said, I want Crow Magnet eyes on this guy. Is that great cat? Let's see. I'll tuck some in here. And you'd think his eyes were bigger for being such a good guy, such a big dude, man. His eyes are pretty small. So I had some eyeballs that uh, I kept aside for him. I was going to use some light bulb bulbs for him, but I'll save them for my bat, my bat character. All right. Want them deep-ass corners so I can throw a lot of shadows in there. And this guy goes for paint. All right. We'll do some bags. He's got really kind of low cheeks. I definitely want some cheekbones on this guy. Looks like they're kind of pouring and going south, whatever. So, that'll be part of his mouth and his lip. And then I drop my clay. Probably dirty. It's a little bit too even. I want to make them a little bit more lumpier so that one side doesn't really match the other. And we'll take his cheekbone like here and drag it down here. This one's kind of built up, so we'll drag this one down here and do his corner of his mouth. to rough them in. Let's 
let's see. Mm, this guy. Okay. Now I should probably have this guy done in a half an hour. Anytime you waste more than half an hour on a sculpture, you're like losing money, they say. Or at least one guy says, but he's a dumbass anyway, so. Alright, that's not too bad. I like his eye placement. They're not too close together, but I want him far enough apart because he's such a big dude. What's up, Ike? Plaster molds are hell these days for my back. I hear you, Gene, man. Any more plaster, it's like, I think I'll go silicone where I can. <laughs> Vic, man, you can get a whole set of uh, sculpting tools on Amazon for like 20, 30 bucks. Some of these are dollar store things. Some of these are broken paint brushes I use. Um, I'll tell you what, though, the actual loop tools I have, um, these guys. I love Kemper tools, man. Uh, they are on Amazon. The Kemper tools I really like for like finer detail and stuff like that. I mean, they cut in nice, nice and smooth. Um, I really like the Kemper tools. Like I said, you get a set on Amazon. Sometimes you got to buy them together uh, as like a three or four set. That's even better. But the Kemper tools, I really kind of like. But the rest of the stuff is just, you know, brushes from work, stuff I find. Um, and then you get a big old, big old set from Amazon for like 20 or 30 bucks. Yeah, really, Gene, the music probably is a la carte all by itself. I'm still shocked that they, they licensed the character but did not give up his theme music. That's that's crazy, man. Like, it's like, how do you have Michael Myers and you don't have his freaking theme music? You know, or like, what if what the hell are they gonna have Freddy say if they couldn't get his music? How dumb would that been? What's up, John C? Gene says he's in the process of buying the rights to mold and mask. I'm wondering if I do indeed do this, well, I have to keep the license. I don't know, Gene. I don't know if you buy it for a certain time. Like, uh, you get a year with it or two years, whatever it is. Because, like, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, like, when Collegeville and Ben Cooper would go back and forth for licenses for masks, they would have it for the Halloween season, and the next season, another another company would get it. So there was there was two versions or three versions of the same mask by different companies. So I would assume you get it for a little bit, but not much. That's not my cat. She just lives here. She came here one day, and she won't leave. That's a great cat. What's up, Ray? Gene says, or fiberglass resin. Uh, fiberglass or resin. Oh, the teeth? The teeth are most definitely going to be resin on this guy. Tools for clay. Thrift stores, first make them. You can make them. I've made some of mine. All right, but yeah, I love clay face, man. He's just a big old badass villain. He's stupid, he's dumb, he's strong. It's like, what's not to like? Oh, it's getting ready to rain on me, so I may lose my live stream. You guys see him start like buffering and over? That's the damn rain. It rained this morning last night for a while, then now it's kind of coming back, so I don't know what the hell's going on. Let's trench out that corner of the mouth. Yeah. I might make this bigger depending on when I start getting his gums and all that stuff formed in. Let's see where's my other loop tools. I want a nice loop tool for in here. Where's my big round one? Something like a so. Put the clay back in the mouth. Oh, drop and clean the damn ground. Oh, shit. All right. Yeah, that's more better. I'm going to trench that shit out. I'm going to have kind of that overhang lip, so I'm going to have to cut in pretty deep. Make some more pegs for this thing so I can just hang my tools off of the little pegs, take them off, and I'm not using them.
There we go. I kind of like the vertical lines. It looks like his lips are cracking and drying out. Do his little double chin down here. What kind of a nice, I'm gonna end up having to roll this thing on its back and work on his chin probably tomorrow. Want that nice kind of jutting bubble chin. A little bit of cleaner here. For most of the stuff, you really don't need to have a shit ton of fancy tools, man. I mean, a couple of basic tools. I mean, most of this is just all hand work. Uh, Alan does have some sculpting tools. He's got the nice little um, little rakes and stuff like that. So you can take it and put it on your guy and flatten out your clay. Although for this guy, I probably won't need him. Dave's been hiding in the corner. <laughs> oh, the baby must still be up. Haley's up. Jordan says, so, okay, I don't know anything about what you do with this after, like, what's the curing drying process? There is none, Jordan. It's oil-based clay. There's no curing. It stays wet forever. Um, it doesn't dry. It doesn't uh, crack on you. Uh, it's oil-infused, so makes your hands nice and soft, which is great. And uh, it'll stay just like this until I'm ready to mold it, once I get all my details done. It will firm up a little bit, which is great. And then uh, I should be able to go to uh, go to molding, man. I'll, it'll be a silicone mold for this guy. And then once I get a shell for it, I can pour it up in uh, rigid foam. What the hell is that? Pinterest? No, I don't need Pinterest right now. Okay. All right. Let's see. I'm going to have to add some more clay. Must be his bottom blubbery lip. And I'm going to definitely add some clay. I'm going to give him that freaking butt chin. Yeah, like in a comic book, man, he's like terrifying. He can like literally swallow you and envelop you in clay and suffocate you inside of his body. That's pretty goddamn nasty. Okay. Get this kind of roughed in. His mouth will have to be another day, man. That boy got a big old mouth on him. I gotta do gums and teeth. So I may have to go ahead and make his teeth before I even finish his, uh, start on his gum so I can have him ready to plug in. Boom. So press that up in there. Let's go ahead and roll this guy out, man. Of course, you guys can't see in the mouth, but I just want to smooth it out so I'm ready to go start throwing clay in there when I get the outside of his head done. Get 
Make some holes for his teeth. Tufuses. I tell you, I really do like this oil-based clay, man. Um, I learned this from David Quinn. He uses oil-based, loves it. And you know, when I wanted to start making masks, it's like I don't have sometimes a whole time period to sit down and bang out a whole mask. So with oil-based clay, man, you can sculpt something, walk away for a day, a week, a month, a year, come back, pick it up later. So uh, the oil-based is the way to go. No, Jamie, that cat is not in the house. That's an outside cat that kind of stays here in the shop. Uh, we don't know where she came from. She just showed up one day, and she's been here for like, hell, six weeks, seven weeks, something like that. No clue. Uh, Norm, this is oil-based clay. This is just uh, uh, Plastilina from Van Aiken. They have it at Hobby Lobby. Let's see, Gene says, also working on a sculpting aid, an inflatable head and shoulder. You put the clay in to sculpt, and after demolding, you let the air out. Uh, you know what, Gene, I was thinking about that for some of my next ones. I may use like a water pitcher, man. Take a water pitcher, because it's obviously narrower at the bottom. Do your sculpting on it. And then when you're done, when you get it molded, flip it over with hot water, pull it out, and then you can easily collapse the clay around it. So almost use the water sculpture like a neck and trunk, and then slide that out, and then all your clay should hopefully fall in from the void from the uh, the uh, water pitcher. That was one of my ideas. I thought maybe that'll work. Okay, let's clay this clay face, or we'll roll his ass. Put a little band roll on. Yeah, look at them chubby cheeks. Ooh, daddy loves them. them smash them brows in. I want to put some, like, nubby warts on them and stuff like that, because this guy has a couple of warts on him. I think that's pretty cool, man. Right. Roll around his little forehead. On his little dome peak forehead. Yep. Give him a little tiny cone head. Mm -hmm. This helps also push out the air bubbles under your clay. So if you, when you go to mold it, you don't have a blowout. And if I see anything I don't like, like a little uh, open pocket, I can just smooth some clay over it, then come back and roll right on top of it. Of course, we're nowhere near detail time yet. I'm just trying to bulk out the whole shape of his head. Then I can go back in and start cutting details in and stuff like that. So basically, just a big rough in, making sure his eyes are in the right place. Because so i got to do some heavy lids on the bottom. and I still want him to have, like, even though he's a blob of mud, I still want him to have some human features like wrinkles and, like, stretching of his skin. Like, what part was mud and what part is actual skin in between the process where he's, uh, you know, half human and half mud man. So I want to have like definite cheekbones that are like stretched out and almost like a uh, laugh lines stretched in his face. So even though he's a basically just a big blob of clay, he can uh, still have some detail and he won't be just like a blob. Pump up his eyes. That easy. So this cheekbone's a little more out. This cheekbone's a little further down. That'll make his smile look kind of twisted when I poke his teeth in there and make his teeth. So I don't want him perfectly symmetrical. I want him kind of blobby and like he's stretched out, constantly always moving and morphing. So let's see if I can straighten out this big blubber lip a little bit. Yeah, I really want to put some, like, some dirty-ass, nasty, chap lips on them. Nice little round tube. Yeah, I miss sculpting. It's been a minute, man. I've been doing so much other crap and busy at work. It's like, really can't wait to be able to just, like, sit down and play with some clay again and start making some stuff.
Make them all drippy and nasty. Then do a killer paint job on with a shit ton of washes and filth and make them look totally badass. Alright. So he's got kind of like a little. I can just push up instead of dragging out. And he's got little little lumps and bumps off his lips. Look like he's got fucking herpes or something like that. Gene says, is that monster clay or something else? Roma, this is just a uh, plastilina clay, Jane. Gene. They have it at Hobby Lobby. I got these online um, from Michael's for like 15 bucks a brick. They had 20% off. But right now, Hobby Lobby has clay for sale. I could only buy two when I ordered that one time. So I only got 10 hour and a half pound bricks. These guys were 15 bucks on sale. Uh, so you get 20% off. So they were like $12 a brick or something like that when I, uh, when I ordered them. And they finally came in today. So yeah, monster clay. Monster clay is freaking expensive. It's oil-based clay, but whoo, man, that shit can get expensive real fast. So I don't have any, but uh, yeah, maybe one day I'll get some and play with it. Okay, kind of want to drag everything down. Since he is kind of a molten man, kind of watery, I want everything to kind of shed down. Looks like he's got some little stretch line, corner of his mouth. That's too much. We can do this. Just roll our lines in. Now we can kind of start showing some of the, like, the muscles under his skin. What were muscles at one time, and now it's all mud. Eyes are really freaking deep set. Right, let's push these eyes down some. That's pretty cool. Uh. That's the good thing about clay, man. It's forgiving. So if you screw something up, throw some more on, smash it down, add in more. You can always redo it. Clay is your friend. Yeah. Okay. 
Alright, cut him out of here. Alright. Some definition under his lower chin. Black Lab showed up when we were working on the car. He never left. That's how it goes sometimes, Norm, man. These animals come out of nowhere. This great cat is declawed in the front. She has her rear claws. She bit me the, like the second day she was here. She bit April the first day she was here, so she's an ornery little bitch. But uh, we've been feeding her and stuff. April takes care of her, so we've been trying to find her and get find their owners, and April's been talking to people on Facebook, so nobody's stepped up and claimed her yet. Norm says, I'm Native American. When an animal chooses us, it's a good sign. There's most likely a reason. I mean, that's true. Kate the Great Jamie have been chosen. Do not question. Only feed and pet her when the door is open. It's open. And we let her in and out every morning. When I go to work in the morning, I let her out of the garage because she's been in here all night. I leave the window open for her, turn the fan on for her. I hear you, Gene. I'm too slow for water-based. I don't want to take the damn time. Uh, I can't just jump on it and, and stay on something because I'm constantly moving around. Mix medium and soft to get what I want. Yeah, you can totally mix clay. Uh, Roma decades ago with the blowtorch. Oh, yeah. Some of the Roma clays are hard as shit. I've got a couple of blocks that are, man, I made a mold wall for my mask out of it. Man, it was like freaking heat and concrete. I put it on a little heating pad uh, next to my uh, head head or my little ed head form. And that kind of softened up enough so I could get it to lay down and then make it a mold wall out of it. But I haven't actually sculpted with it yet. It's actually a textured roller, Nick. Uh, these are from... Uh, David Quinn at Monsters Alive. There's three different ones. There's a fine texture, a heavy texture, and a medium texture. So I use these guys. I'm just kind of breaking in my clay or whatever. But then I've also got these guys I made where I took some of my 20T silicone and I just molded a grapefruit. I spread the grapefruit out and I molded it. So these guys make like awesome freaking texture, man. You can like push your clay around and stuff. Smash it into those little grooves and stuff like that. So it gives it that, like, uh, pimply skin appearance. Especially when you're going in around wrinkles, you want to press them in. I mean, this stuff works freaking great, man. And it's just, it's a grapefruit that peel that I uh, molded. He's done. Let's mold him. Yeah, you can just fold it in half or... You know, I can left the little sharp corners on there so I can dig into like a valley where a wrinkle might be. They work freaking great, man. Of course, you can make, you know, latex stamps, texture stamps, and stuff like that. Like around his lip. Then I'll switch it up. I'll get my other one out. I've got like a longer version. So you can make his like big butt lips. I'll probably use this for inside of his mouth. When I get ready to start bulking out his uh his lower gums, because his gums are gonna be like in here. So he's basically that's gonna be his gum line basically, and then his teeth will be here. So I'll have to go. I'll probably poke some slots in with uh Oh, maybe even a paint stick. I may use a paint stick because he's got some big goddamn teeth, man. That boy's got some big toothuses. Yeah, but the little stamps, man, I love these things, man. Grab a piece off of something. Fold them in half and then jam them into a wrinkle. And it's something you can't buy at the store, you just make it yourself. You know, everybody who's sculpting, you know, everybody's used you know, cap racers or use a tool you found somewhere at the back of a popsicle or a screwdriver or some damn thing, you know. Um, we just make do with what we have. And some of the stuff, like, you know, it's so cool that you find something that's like, oh, man, like, that's better than a store-bought tool, you know. So if you got, like, a grapefruit or, man, even an avocado. I hate avocado, but April eats them, the baby eats them. Um... I need to like mold an avocado skin so I can have an even deeper texture than this one because this one's grapefruit. I can just pull it down. 
I'm about to lay this guy back and do his chin. And you can just fucking slap him around with it. Like, yeah, take it, bitch. Take it. Mm, he's your fucking daddy. Mm, take that shit. Mm. And you can just press in your wrinkles and your texture so you got some kind of lumpy ass skin texture. And just pinch it around. Probably do inside of his chin. And see, he's got all kinds of like stretchy and, and tenons, so. Maybe I'll go ahead and I'll bulk in his, uh, his gums. Take that. Yeah, this dollar store tool, man. It's a chopper, scraper, cutter. I got this from Dollar Tree for $1. This thing is freaking awesome, man. You know, you don't have to use, like, uh, dowel rods and wire and all that stuff. This stuff works a whole lot easier. Well, you can totally blowtorch this stuff. Nick says, that's why I know what my cat Artem is. She hunts lizards around our house. Yeah, that's right. You're in Florida, Nick, so there's constant lizards. Dave's the same way. After she came to us hurt one evening, she made her she made her ours after a trip to the vet. That's cool taking something in, you know. Um, we've had two outside cats that just showed up here and, and never left. April took care of them. We had one for like, Jesus Christ, Lucas, he's actually in one of my videos. He's in my uh, 2019 Tombstone video, I think. Um, he's a little black cat with a little white, he got a little black goatee and a white tail and he was walking to the graveyard while I was out there setting up tombstones doing a video. And I'm like, Lucas, get out of the graveyard. What are you doing? But he was one that showed up that, uh, just came out of the blue, and, and he lived here for seven, eight years, and we took care of him. So he ended up dying out, getting sick. His teeth were falling out. He was blind. Uh, but he was an outside cat, man. He would kill mice. And we had another outside cat that he taught how to hunt and take care of himself because the cat was dumb as shit. Um, but after Lucas died, the other cat became like a killing machine. He was killing uh, uh, moles and birds and freaking everything. And he would leave it on the front porch. I'm going to smooth out the inside of this mouth, I think, a little bit. Let's do uh, a little texture going on in there. I'm going to heat this up with a blowtorch and smooth this out a little bit. All right, the blowtorch. Let's light some shit on fire. Do it. It's another reason why I put him on wood, because I knew I was going to come back and do some melting on them to smooth them out probably when I'm done. When I'm done with everything, I'll probably come back and torch all of them to try and get that nice little runny look. But he don't have enough detail yet. Another great way to soften up hard clay. And this just melts it right back down the board. Another reason why I love oil-based clay. I'm okay to go ahead and put a little uh, a little gum in them. Looks like it's basically straight up. So Ugh. a feral tabby descent. I don't know what our cats are. They're just uh. Most of them are just short-haired strays. This gray cat, she's a long hair, like probably a long hair tabby. Don't know where the hell she came from, but she's an ins she's an inside cat somewhere. I don't know if somebody died. Next to me, I have another subdivision that like a lot of elderly people live in there, really nice houses, or my house is sort of like the ghetto area. And uh, I think she might come from in there because there's like a forest that separates us from the next subdivision over. And I think she might have came out of there, man, because she seems like she's uh, used to being indoors.
I'm going to bring that down some more. I want to exaggerate that more. Yeah. Jesus, I hadn't planned on a cat, but she's an amazing little animal. Housebroken, really fair, pretty, really pretty feral tabby. That's cool. She works, man. She fits into your family. That's awesome. Not really, Jean. April's the one that does it, man. She takes care of the cat. I just put up with it. What's up, Zit Fart? Is this Arkham Clayface? No, Zit. This is just um, Clayface in general. I'm a longtime Batman reader, so I'm using a couple of the action figures. And just from what my memory from the comic book, uh, to make it kind of like my version of Clayface. So it's not any certain uh, one, but he's sort of like an amalgamation of all of them. So I figure out roughing his uh, his gums tonight. And he'll be all, like I said, rigid foam when I'm done. So he can hang on a wall and if he falls off, he'll be nice and strong. He'll also be able to be put outside. Nick says, well, I'll take it back to clay. Monster clay is a favorite food of mice and rats. It seems so having a cat around is good for you preventing your sculpts getting chewed on. Wow, no shit. What the hell is in monster clay that mice like to get into that stuff, man? I never heard that before. Vic, are you still on? Vic's got a shit ton of monster clay he bought. I don't know if the mice been chewing on it or not. Man, I had no clue about that, man. I've got a bunch of oil-based clay that I bought. It's in the garage somewhere. I have no damn idea I couldn't find it. I looked for freaking two days, couldn't find what I did with it, so I ended up having to just order clay. So now I got, what, 20... What did I order? I ordered two from... Hobby Lobby, that was the most I could get. They would let me put in the cart. I got two from them, then I ordered six from Michael. So I had uh, two, six. Oh, goddamn math. That's six, eight bricks times four, 32, like 37 pounds or something like that. It's like, oh, God. It's like more goddamn math. I hate math. All right. I definitely want to give him some substantial badass teeth. Not the most what it looks like. Let's see, he's back up there, then to the top. I'm gonna end up having to do a a thing for his upper gums. That's okay. Yeah, I want to do my uh, a big bat thing next. I'm hoping that I can make it sort of like a costume and a fogger head. So I want to do like a big giant bat head I can do in rigid foam. Alright, let me get a little trench out a little bit. And it's just his tongue in there. And that's probably about the back of his throat right there. So let's get his little epiglottis. Okay. I'll do a tongue down there after a while. I guess I should just use a ball stylus and ball stylus this all in. I don't know why anybody hasn't done this, man. Like, Clayface is an awesome freaking character. How come, like, they don't make, like, they make all them goddamn Star Wars heads. You can go get, like, Boba Fett helmets and all that shit, but it's like, how come you can't get, like, a Clayface or something, or, you know? Um, I don't get it. So it's like, all right, I'm making my damn self. Stretch this up. Bring this up. Bring this up. So I, I do like watching, like, uh, when Jordu was doing Instagram a lot, man, that son of a bitch would just pinch off a piece of clay and be like, 
And it was beautiful. Like, you son of a bitch, man. It's like, he just knows, like, right where the hell to put the clay at. It's like, I wish I could sculpt like him. I think the more you use your hands, the better you get faster. Gums, I went nice and smooth. The ball goes up. where his lower jaw is going to be. Well, I like that guy. He's had a gnarly-ass mouth on him. long stretch skin stretches down to the inside bottom of his jaw I want to bring those out some more too so they look more realistic so I'll go down to here alright what am I missing Still shocked about damn mice and rodents lightning the the monster clay. Chopper Tree is right, man. We found some amazing stuff at Dollar Tree to just tear up some shit with. Gene says my cat had some breeding as too. Breeding as well too. Too smart and too clean from his this hood. I live in a ghetto. <laughs> Zitfart says, that's still cool. Gene says, damn, me neither. Where's the cat? She's gonna be the guard of that guard that clay. Uh she likes to sleep on a table. I'm surprised she ain't in here because it's raining, so she's probably under my truck. I don't know where the hell she's at. Oh, uh, I do. Zip fart, man. I totally want to do a man bat. I love man bat. Um, I don't know. If most people are like, oh, man bat's stupid because he doesn't have any power. He's just a, he's just a giant bat. I, I, I've always loved man bat. Kurt Langstrom, he's awesome, man. Uh, I think Spider-Man, for the most part, I think Spider-Man sucks ass. But he has the most best rogues gallery. Um, I love Batman way more than Spider-Man, even though Spider-Man's supposedly a scientist. But, like, Batman's a scientist. You see it in all his work and how he's uh, solving crimes and stuff like that. So, But, uh, man, Spider-Man always gets shown up by his uh, his villains. Like, Craven. Craven's a total badass. I love Mysterio. Any guy who walk around in public with a fucking fishbowl on his head, that's a badass man. That's a man you don't want to mess with. So I've always thought his rogues gallery... He's had the best Rose Gallery in all of comics next to uh, Batman. But I do love Man Bat, and uh, I want to do a big Man Bat head. Not an actual Man Bat, but a Man Bat inspired uh, giant head um, that I want to use for costumes and stuff like that. Just drag this out. I think that needs to go a little higher right here. All right. Fill that in. I'm going to give this guy a big-ass mouth so he looks like he could swallow a human head in one shot. My, uh... Why didn't I show the picture yet? My Killer Croc figure came in. Like, this guy is literally, like, four and a half pounds of plastic. This son of a bitch is heavy. So Killer Croc came in. I got him, and I've got Man Bat, and they're all massive monster figures, man. Um, I'm going to put a picture up on cobwebs of all of them so I can show you guys. Because Batman's, like, this big. Uh, in a comic book, man, they all tower over Batman. Uh, man Bat, uh, Killer Croc, and uh, Clayface. So, they're freaking awesome, man. I loved in the uh, comic when uh, there was a guard that was uh, screwing with uh, Waylon, uh, Killer Croc, and he bit his goddamn hand off. So, in the comic book, from that point on, he had uh, a stump, which is pretty cool when he came back to Arkham after getting uh, his hand bitten off by Killer Croc. 
Yeah, I think so, Clay, uh, Zitfart. Like, you know, he's kind of a simple design. He's he's a blob, basically. It's like, how hard can it be to screw him up? But yet, you know, you can't see him. He's going to see him on the wall and think, oh, man, he's a dookie guy. You know, so I want to give him that true uh, clay face look. So when somebody looks at him, they know, oh, man, is that clay face? Like, oh, yeah. I, I, I really like kind of do a killer croc head, too. Uh, Zitfart, I'm going to make the teeth out of uh, Super Sculpey. I'll bake those, and then I'll plug them in. Uh, then I'll pull them out when I'm happy with them. I'll shave them down. And then I'll mold these, mold the teeth separate. So the mold, so this guy will have uh, resin uh, teeth in him when he's done. And I'm ready to plug them back into the uh, sculpture when they're poured up after they're molded. Had a pet rat that would stay out of plastic baggage? Wow. Why would a rat eat plastic baggies? Huh. Guess it's sweet tasting or something to them, but it's always annoying to me to just to have a hat. My garage doesn't close up tight, so it can't prevent pests from entering. Man, that sucks, man. I guess the only thing you can really do, Nick, is put it like in a iron locker or something like that, a metal locker to keep the damn rats away from it from chewing on it or nibbling on it or licking it or whatever they do. Gene says, I'm known as the tree guy. That guy buys all the paper towel holders. <laughs> I pick up 10 to 20 at a time for mass displays. I've seen that, Gene. I've seen that House of Masks guy. He does like a paper towel stick and then he wads up newspaper and sets the mask over it, you know. Um, I'm to the point where it's like I really have no more room for masks, so I haven't bought a lot of masks lately. It's like, man, I'm running out of friggin' space for stuff, so uh, I gotta kind of watch what I buy. So that kind of sucks. But I've been using just like uh, doll heads, or not doll heads, um, uh, what you call it, uh, styrofoam heads or plastic heads and then put a uh a head scarf on it or whatever and then put the uh mask on top but even my shelf is like getting to the point where it's overflowing so it's like oh man what am i gonna do so i gotta figure something better out all right let me mash these down blend them in Strings. Uh, yeah, I'll probably have to do a little dip down. I have to put a tongue in there too, so I need to make a deeper hole in the back of his mouth. Then I want to sculpt some waves on the roof of his mouth. I'll have to lay him back for that. So when I do that, I'll do his chin too, the underside of his chin. Because I got him just sitting on the board right now where I can pick him up. Uh, look at these guys. He's going to be heavy because i got 20 damn pounds of clay on here. 24 pounds of clay. Ugh. So that'll let me move him around to get on the roof of his mouth and stuff. All right, so we got some gum started here. I'm pretty happy about that. Make these little pockets. I want everything kind of askew. I don't want anything dead straight or symmetrical. I want it to look like it's all constantly like ever changing. So that I'm pretty happy with. I'll dig the little sockets out later. Not too bad. That's 24 pounds of clay down. All right. A little. Oh shit! On the ground. I think once I put teeth in him, man, they'll really make this guy start to come alive. All right. Let me get a roll on him. Make 
sure all those little pockets are cleaned up. And then tomorrow I can start carving details in on this guy. Those little eye bulges. Uh -oh, who's dinging me now? Is that a free, uh, a free home uh, inspection? I mean, ever since I got my damn website up, I mean, I've been getting calls from Chinese people all day long. This cat? Is this cat? You want graphic design? You want graphic design? Like, Dr. Bombay! Dr. Bombay! If I want some uh, graphic design, I'll call you. You don't have to call me and ask. That's a pretty good start, man. And now the rain's coming down really good. Yeah, I won't stay on too much longer. I think uh, Brother Vic is going to uh, live stream a little bit. He's working on that big six-foot uh, uh, skeleton that he's claying into a board. He's going to make like a catacomb wall with it. Uh, so I should be jumping off in a little bit. You guys can go over there and meet me over at Monster Misfits. Hang out and see what the hell Vic's gonna uh, sculpt tonight. He's probably got ready to do the next stage, or I think he found some more clay because he was out of clay on that thing. Because it's taking up a shit ton of clay. Alright, we'll do a little bit in the mouth, smooth that out a little bit. I think tomorrow I'm gonna come out, carve some details in him, stretch some of his skin out. I'm going to play with his lips a little bit, flare them out. Definitely want to clean this edge up so I get a nice thick edge on him so he doesn't get too thin in case he falls off the wall and freaking breaks or cracks. I always worry about that shit when I sell it to get to somebody's house that falls off once and breaks like, oh no, not my stuff, man. So in fact, where is my... Come on, fool. There we go. You want to uneven? It's like drawing a little squiggly line. doing this with my little uh, monster magnets too. Then you get a nice dividing parting line around them. I'm going to have to wait for this one tomorrow because i got to roll back on his chin. Then I like to take a uh, silicone shaper. This guy's the rounded one. Not, he's the wrong one. Uh, silicone shaper. I need a better system for organizing my goddamn sculpting tools, man. They're always a hot freaking mess. Looking for the one I broke. That's the one I use all the time. Do you notice how broken tools work the best? What is that goddamn thing? You son of a bitch. Aha! This is like my favorite shaper, obviously, because I broke the damn thing. But anytime I do my little cut lines, where I'm smoothing out something, I like to go back and tuck it in and just go around that edge and stuff it in there. So that way I have a little curve back on itself so it doesn't come like he's straight flat on the wall. This way it gives a little shadow back there too, kind of makes him look like he's bigger and more intimidating. So I always like to come back and tuck that little edge back. So then I know what his footprint is. So then I know, okay, I don't have to go beyond this point. So basically just stabbing in and you're lifting a little bit. 
I'm just tucking that clay in. So by the time I come back and wipe this thing down with mineral spirits, it'll smooth it right into the board. And it'll have me a nice little lip right there for the silicone to bite into. It'll be, it'll be nice as a, when the, I get it all molded. I'll have that little lip that I'll put some uh, little wooden balls around here to hold it as keys. And uh, this thing will have a nice little perfect lip around it where you don't get a ragged edge on whatever it is you're molding. And I'll go back and take this guy. Try and find my nice little grapefruit edge right there. And I'll just tuck it in that corner and tuck that clay in. So then I'll have a nice clean footprint for this guy. And when he's all done and I run the torch over a mineral spirits, I'll have a nice defined edge all the way around so he doesn't look like it was an afterthought. All right, give him a little bit of texture and I'll leave this guy for tomorrow. I want to give Vic some time to jump on and work on his skeleton. But for, man, what have I got, like maybe, I don't know, maybe two, three hours in this guy or so. Most of the time just putting clay on the damn big-ass board. He's got a big head-ass Todd. Let's go ahead and tuck the clay in behind his head. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I don't think that's too bad of a start, man. He's definitely looking... Uh, Basil Carlaw-ish. I definitely want to make sure his chin's bigger on one side, his lips bigger over there. I want him to be uneven. Alright, this one. He's pretty big though. I mean, man, look at my head. I could just about stick my whole head inside of his. Mr. Basil Carlo. Give him a little bit here. Push that in so he's uneven. And tomorrow we'll define some cheekbones. Clean his line up. Make sure that's nice and pretty. So I can move on to his mouth. His mouth, I'll, I'll end up finishing his mouth being his mouth will be the last detail I'll do. So I'll get his whole head done. And then I'll come back and I'll finish up his mouth. And I don't have my flashlight in here either to show you guys his, uh, his eyes light up. So when I get this mold done, it'll be a silicone mold. I'll put the mold face down. I'll pour his eye sockets with uh, the same resin. The, I'll mix up some uh, lit powder and I'll uh, make his eyes resin first. And then I'll back through with foam. So when I pop him out, he'll be all uh, raw, rigid foam, but he'll have uh, resin eyes inside of him. So that'll be a nice little touch versus just foam eyes and trying to paint them. Uh, they'll be nice and glossy and they'll be hard. So if a little kid comes by and tries poking the eyes out and dicking into the foam, he can't. It's resin, so he won't go. He won't cave in. All right. I think that's good for tonight, man. I got 20 pounds of... No, I've got one, two, three, four, four or five bricks. That's 20. I got 22 and a half pounds of clay on clay face as he sits right now. Plus foam. Let me pull you guys off and I'll show you up close. All right. Well, that is the clay face. So we kind of cleaned his little, his little. Clean all that. Still working on the roof of his mouth. I got to cut his little valleys in there and his little epiglottis, and I'll make a little tongue for him. But overall, I don't think he's too bad for being a couple hours out on him. I'll make his gums. I'll finish those out last so they're nice and smooth and glossy. And then I got to make his teeth and plug those in. And that should really start to make this guy. But for a couple hours work, man, I mean, he'll hang off the wall. He should be pretty sweet looking. Should make a nice bust. Maybe I can do Killer Croc too. All right, guys. So let me jump on comments for a bit. Then we'll leave this guy as is. I'm gonna go see Brother Vic. Gene says, plus I have a 10 by 10 room and almost 100 masks. God damn, Gene. That's crazy, man. 100 masks? 
Star heads are seven bucks. PT holders and bags, one dollar. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, Zipfire says my babe, my Batman villain is either Scarecrow or Riddler. Um, I like Riddler, but he's a little flat. I really like Penguin. How Finch drew him and really played him up as a hardcore gangster uh, when they did the New Fifty Two. Uh, Riddler's had cool times. I really like Hush. Uh, Hush is cool. I love his class enemies like Killer Croc. I love Zaz. Um, oh, man. Uh, he's got so many, man. Uh, literally, Arkham Asylum is full of them. It's such a great storyline that, you know, all the, all the crazies he's, he's put in there. Even Azrael. I, lo I love Azrael. Sort of Azrael uh, is sort of a villain, an anti-hero, and a hero. He's all three. Um... The Nightfall storyline was freaking amazing, man. When Azrael took over and kicked Robin out of the Batmobile, filled his seat in with computers and all kinds of stuff, and then Azrael went off the goddamn deep end, and he was, you know, killing people, and he was shooting like, uh, he was beating the shit out of people and thugs, and it was just amazing, man. And, and then him and Joker met up, and Joker knew that it wasn't Bruce Wayne. He said, no, he said, you're, you're, you're bat, you're dressed like Batman. And he's like, but, but you're not Batman. And, uh... Asriel grabbed Joker, and he broke both his arms. He's like, okay, Bats, take me back. He's like, you're not going back to Arkham Asylum. He goes, I'm going to fucking kill you. So Asriel broke both of Joker's uh, arms, and Joker was laying on the ground all uh, on the rooftop laughing and shit. And the Commissioner Gordon showed up, and they chased off Batman before he could kill Asriel. But uh, I love Sword of Asriel, too, man. He's had a really cool um, really cool run like a nightfall, taking over Batman's mantle when Batman got his back broke by Bane. Um so I'm just a longtime Batman fan. Uh, and Bane's an okay enemy. He's more just a big, dumb, tough guy. He really doesn't have style like Clayface. Or, you know, I, I love I love Penguin, too. Um, Penguin's awesome. Um, like I said, I'm just a, a longtime, longtime Batman fan. So I got to give Batman some love and do something different. Doesn't always have to be about the haunting stuff. But uh, I think this guy's going to make a great wall trophy for, like, a game room or something like that. I'm definitely keeping one for myself. That's for damn sure. And then hopefully it'll be at M8C next year. Let's see, what kind of creature are you sculpting? Thomas K, I am sculpting Clayface from Batman. So from the comic books, that's who I'm sculpting. Not any specific version, not a, you know, an exact copy. Uh, just these are my little reference guys, my little figures that I've got. So he's going to be Clayface from Batman. And that guy's funny, man. Vic's sculpt is massive. Absolutely right. And I'm going to go see him as soon as I jump off here. I'm going to take a shower because Vic's going to come on in a couple of minutes. So we're going to uh, gang up on you guys tonight. Going there after this. Vic's mantra misfits right up my alley. Zit fart, man. Totally. Brother Vic, man. You know, we, we had a blast MHC blast at last year's MHC. Uh, we've always got something to work. Sometimes it's hard with family stuff. And, you know, we got... We got day jobs. We're not, you know, YouTubers. We got, you know, we got shit to do. We got, we got bills to pay. Uh, so we can't play with monsters all day. Um, but one of these days we get to that point, man, where we can kind of like transition from doing our full-time jobs and slow down a little bit, start doing more of this. Man, you will not be... The stuff that we talk about that we want to do, we are ready to blow your guys' freaking minds, man. So you guys just stay tuned. We got a lot in store for you guys. We constantly talk all day long. We don't disappear like people, you know, like, oh, join my Patreon. And then you don't get a video for four months out of the people, which is kind of some bullshit. Um... We constantly have ideas. We literally never run out of ideas. We're constantly bouncing stuff off each other all day long. Oh, I saw this. You want to, I'm going to try this. What about this? Look what this guy made. We can do it like this. So, man, there is never a shortage of ideas coming out of the Trio of Terror, ever. And Vic loves to do all the big shit. Vic don't care about size. Uh, he gets worried about, oh, I'm going to make me a little skull. He's like, but it's going to be like shit. So instead, I'm going to make a 60-foot creepy town facade. It makes no sense. He does the opposite. So anything small he doesn't like to do. But yeah, he'll go build a 60-foot uh, creepy town facade. That's that's just how Vic rolls. You mean anything? Uh, nope, I'm coming in a minute because I'm going to go watch Vic. But thank you. Is this going to be beer o'clock? I better have an ice-cold MGD in the fridge. Okay, Patty says, I never tried molding yet, but wanting to. Thanks for the advice about oil clay. Sounds like the best way to go. Patty, Hi. if you're going to make something like... Like, say if you're going to make a little monster magnet or... Uh, something you want to mold. Now, molding this clay with silicone, if you get too harsh on it, you're going to move it around and distort it. Um, so when I do like my monster mags, I know I'm going to make a little silicone mold of, I always do those in super sculpy clay, get them exactly how I want them, and then I bake them so that they're more, they're stronger, they're sturdier, 
And then later on when the mold wears out, I can go back and make another mold. I just keep my original. So if you're going to do something like that you want to make a mold of, keep in mind you might want to do super sculpty because it's firm. What are you doing, Savage? I got a hair off. I want to just melt the hairs off when the gray cat gets out of here with the blowtorch. But if you're going to mold, keep a super sculpty in mind for small projects. And if you want to do something big like this, you're going to silicone. Then you can use big, you know, just, uh, just regular clay is fine. But for small stuff, I like using a uh, super sculpt because you kind of got to push it down to make a little uh, wall for clay and stuff like that. So depending on what I'm doing, I try and use the right clay. Nick says, I have a sculpting tool I fixed probably 20 times and smoothing and shaping everything. You know, Nick, I do, I've got some ideas in my head for tools uh, that I want to make eventually when I become like an actual sculptor. <laughs> um, I got a bunch of stuff in my head that I want to kind of produce and maybe like go to a manufacturer and say, hey, man, I want hickory handles. I want this, this and that. And get, and get my design made or whatever. Let's see. Zip face. Clayface is one of those villains you really don't want to mess with. Oh, hell, can you imagine fighting Clayface? Like, you'd literally come home filthy. So either way you lose, you couldn't beat his ass because you still lose. If he doesn't suffocate you, you'd be a filthy damn mess getting back in your car. Zip farts would be cool if he was dripping around the, the mouth, kind of like the Matrix. My plan is zip fart. I'm gonna have. I'm definitely gonna torch him to let some of this clay run. I am gonna do some drums and drips on him, and then what my plan is is like when he's all painted, I'm gonna do his mouth in um, either resin or I'm gonna brush it in five minute epoxy so it's nice and wet, and then I'll put some slobber and stuff on. You can use a silicone, but to me it just looks cheap. It just looks like blobs of silicone hanging off the bottom of a guy. I don't wanna do that shit. I wanna try and make as high end of stuff as I can. I always want to push myself to be better. I don't be making the same old shit for 20 years. I want to keep trying new things. So I'm definitely going to add some drips. I want to have a nice one. I want him to look like lifelike clay. So I'll probably even do him in a semi-gloss uh, finish so that he's wet and moist looking. And uh, I definitely want to slobber up his mouth and use my DevCon to make some, uh, some drool on him and stuff so he looks like he's got a wet mouth. Well, thank you, Patty. Texture is easy, man. Texture is the best part of sculpting because you can literally press anything up against a sculpt. You know, you can stick a, a piece of a uh, bag. You can stick a wadded up napkin. And you can just press details into these guys all day long and you get random, random detail. You can sculpt with anything. You don't have to be a pro sculptor. Pick up anything. Like I said, look at this. We're just using a, a freaking used uh, white shop towel. So you don't have to have a million dollars of the tools. Use whatever you can find around your house or shop. Patty says, hi, Savage, wherever you're at. I love Man Bat Branch Core. I'm a huge Man Bat fan. Like, I got Joker inside my arm. Uh, I want to get Man Bat on top of my arm, and then I want to add Dr. Freeze. And I think I want to put Azra. I want to finish my sleeve in uh, Batman Villains. So uh, for sure, uh, Man Bat is on my hit list. And then uh, Scarecrow, too, because I like Scarecrow. Brother Vic zombies do look so cool. Brother Vic, hands down, is a zombie guy, man. He loves his zombies. That guy can crank out zombies all damn day long and never get tired of it. Vic's probably the biggest gore hound out of the whole trio. What's up, Rick? Oh, that's cool, man. I got a bunch of... Uh, have I picked up any cool items this year? So you guys see I've been doing the shopping videos. Not a whole lot, you know. Um, I should have been able to do a haul by now, but with work and stuff being so busy, I'm almost to the point where I just want to build my own shit, man, because anything I buy, it's going to be in somebody else's yard, so I either got to modify it. I, I don't know. I think I'm just getting to the point where I love seeing it. I love being inspired by it, going store hopping and showing you guys what's available where and for how much if you guys want to get it for yourself. But for myself, I, I haven't really bought a whole lot. Um, I might do a little Halloween haul, possibly, I'll uh, show you guys a small thing. I think you guys are going to be shocked, like, that I didn't buy a whole bunch of stuff. But I haven't been to Home Depot yet, so that could all change. I could be eating my words and kicking myself in the nuts. Um, I'll tell you what you're not going to find. Me buying gnomes. Not going to happen. Unless I'm destroying them. Ranger X says, oh, Hollywood Hunter. Oh, what's up? Hey, man, I'm going to listen in while I fiberglass. Looking great, my friend. <laughs> you're still, still, poor Chris is still fiberglass in the, uh, the monuments. I'm getting ready to jump off, Chris, because I'm going to go watch Vic fix it and lay out a big six-foot uh, slab of a skeleton he's, he's uh, claying into place and stuff, so I won't be on long. Um, 
but your uh your mausoleum's looking great your 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 uh monuments are looking great it's got to be weird now that Harrison's back in school. You'll be like, well, man, what do we what do we do all day? We've got more time to work. You ain't got to watch the boy. It's like, so it's got to be kind of nice. I'm sure you guys are missing the hell out of him when he goes off to school. Like, we didn't know what to do with ourselves. So that's pretty awesome, though. Gene says, foil, brown paper bags. Exactly, Gene. Rolled up brown paper bags. That stuff gives you the greatest texture, man. Um, surprising I don't have any brown paper bags here because everybody gives you plastic bags at the damn store now. But you can use basically anything, uh, Brillo pads, scotch bright pads. You can use the back of, you know, anything can be a sculpting tool. So you don't have to have expensive stuff. Lettuce. <laughs> I've never used lettuce yet, but I do know people, like with oak leaves, the big heavy oak leaves that had the thick veins in them. Like, I had all oaks around my house. They're mostly dead. Uh, oak leaves make awesome veins, man. So you can press an oak leaf into a uh, into clay. It works great. Gene says, DC always seemed to have better bad guys. I'm a Foomer, so the X-Men were always my bag. Uh, yet DC's Rogue Gallery and Legion of Doom were killer. You know, Gene, that's my biggest thing. I'm an uncanny X-Men guy, so I grew up with X-Factor, with Havoc and Polaris and uh, Angel, when he, before he got his wings ripped off. And then, like, I think in issue 15 is when Blockbuster broke his wings. Uh, and then he woke up in the hospital with his wings amputated. And then he jumped out the window to kill himself because he didn't know how to live without his wings. And then Apocalypse caught him and turned him into Archangel. Um, so that early X-Factor is straight goddamn fire, man. I love X-Factor. I love Aunt Uncanny. Uh, everything for the Dark Phoenix saga. Anything John Byrne. Um, I, I, I'm a big Uncanny and Batman. That's what I grew up reading uh, was Uncanny and Batman. So like Wolverine and Jubilee together in the 90s is great when it was like sort of like uh, Shadowcat and Wolverine when he sort of put his... He was almost like a father to Shadowcat growing up. And it was cool when Jubilee came around and she joined because Wolverine kind of took that same fatherly role to her. So, And, of course, I've read all the Logan's um, uh, miniseries, the four-issue miniseries, and he got his own series, like, what, three times. So I always followed Wolverine. I'm a big Wolverine fan. I'm a huge, huge Nightcrawler fan. I love Nightcrawler from MKN X-Men. Like I said, I'm a big Batman and Nightcrawler guy. Uh, the Spider-Man I read, I only ever read for the villains. Even though the the... The villains for X-Men are, are also just as badass. Like, I love Mr. Sinister. I loved in, it was like, X-Men 2... Ah, oh shit. Uncanny X-Men 284, 285, when Bishop was in the X-Mansion, and Mr. Sinister uh, Mr. Sinister decided to, to go into the X-Mansion, but he sent, like, a copy of himself, a hologram of himself, and he was in the front hall, and Bishop was walking down the hall and saw him, and he started making his little karma speech, and Bishop did not hesitate to pull his gun out and shoot that son of a bitch right between the eyes. I just love that. I always loved Bishop, uh, Wolverine, and Archangel together. When those guys would go hunting, it was epic because they didn't care because those guys were freaking murderers. Bishop don't give a shit. He shoots everybody in the face. Which I love Bishop, man. I love freaking Bishop. So those series of issues, the late, the early, late 280s to the 300s of X-Men were freaking a phenomenal run, man. And then, like I said, all the, Jer the John Byrne, the Chris Claremont shit, way back to X-Men. So I'm a big X-Men geek and, uh, and Batman geek, big time. Hell yeah, Gene, Mr. Sinister. He is the shit. Plus, he's got the baddest cloak in comics besides Spawn. Uh, I love Mr. Sinister's, like, split cloak. It's freaking awesome. I, I love Bishop, man. I love Bishop. I love Archangel with the steel wings and, uh, and Wolverine and the Nightcrawler. Uh, like I said, I'm a big X-Men guy way back. Love Beast. Um, even Warpath. I liked Warpath back in the day. Um, and then a huge X-Factor because they're sort of like the, the B team for... Uh, the Uncanny X-Men, even though it was Uncanny Team A and Team B, Blue Team, Yellow Team, but then X-Factor was sort of like the C team. So, loved X-Factor, loved Havoc, because Havoc was another one that was kind of an asshole. He didn't care. He would just blast people in the face because he was Cyclops' little brother, so he didn't get enough love. So, I, I, huge Uncanny buff. I could go on about Uncanny X-Men all damn night. I know most superheroes because of my father. That's awesome, Zit Fart. Uh, Savage's not really into a... She's more into the anime stuff, not so much uh, superhero stuff, but... I keep my comics put up because I've got like eight or nine long boxes plus some smaller boxes of stuff like stashed away. So I haven't really broke them out and showed her yet. But uh, yeah, maybe one of these days I'll show her. I don't know. But yeah, I'm going to quit blabbing so I can get off, guys. I'm going to let Brother Vic jump on. I'm going to go take a shower. and I'm going to go watch him live stream and see what he does on his project. But man, I thank you guys for hanging out, man. I figure I'd jump on. We'll do some clay tonight and actually try and make some stuff. So uh, I'm sure I'll probably jump on again in a couple of weeks or so up till Halloween leads up. I need to get my ass out in the yard and start my display. But yeah. It's been a blast, man. Let's uh, go jump over and see Vic over at Monster Misfits. 
and uh, he's ready to start laying out his uh, clay. So uh, I'll see you guys next time. But man, thanks for hanging out. And uh, I had fun, man. It was fun throwing some clay around again. I've kind of missed it. It's been a minute. So I'll see you guys later. I'll see you over at Monster Misfits. And good night to everybody. So thanks for swinging by, guys. I appreciate it. What the hell did I do? God damn it. Okay.